Hello viewers, welcome to Kids Auto and Truck Repair. Today we have a 2005 Toyota Highlander. The customer complaint on this vehicle is the check engine light remains on on the dash while the engine is running. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the engine so we can confirm the customer's complaint. After confirming the customer's complaint, then we're going to talk about what directions we're going to go so we can fix whatever that's causing the check engine light to remain on on the dash on this vehicle. I want to give a shout out to the owner of this vehicle who is one of our subscribers here on YouTube. His name is Joe. Joe found me on YouTube. He reached out to us. We sent him the shop's address and our contact information. He called us to set an appointment. He set an appointment and then here we are. So Joe drove all the way from Virginia so he can bring his vehicle to us. And I also want to mention that he told me that this vehicle was at two different shops. Two mechanics looked at this vehicle. They tried fixing whatever that's causing the check engine light to remain on on the dash. But unfortunately, the vehicle is still not fixed. The check engine light is still on on the dash. So Joe brought the vehicle to us. Hopefully we can figure out what's going on with this vehicle and let's see if we can fix it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to confirm the customer's complaint. After confirming the complaint, then we're going to talk about what we're going to do so we can fix this. So now let's confirm the complaint. As you can hear, the engine is running and the check engine light remained on on the dash. So customer's complaint confirmed. So the customer is complaining about the check engine light and it looks like we have two more lights that are on on the dash. The VSC light is on, the traction off light is on. So check engine light is on, traction off light is on, and VSC light is on as well. So customer's complaint confirmed. And this vehicle has how many miles does this thing have? This vehicle has 234,000 miles, 587. Wow, this vehicle has a lot of miles. So customer's complaint confirmed. I'm going to turn off the engine. I'm going to turn the key on. I'm going to get the scan tool connected to the vehicle. After I get the scan tool connected, I will bring you guys back up. I got the scan tool connected to the vehicle. I'm going to bring it up. So let's go to scanner. The customer told me that there was an EVAP code that the two shops could not figure out. So apparently there's an EVAP code in the engine computer. So it looks like this is a 2006 and they replaced the fuel cap and that didn't fix the issue. So let's see. Let's do a code scan. Let's scan all the control units on the vehicle and see what we got. So just for our information, the fuel cap was replaced but the vehicle is still not fixed so we have evap system incorrect purge flow evap system vent control fault evap system pressure sensor large leak so it looks like we do have a couple of faults here we have a evap pressure sensor fault code we also have a evap vent control fault code okay so the customer was right the customer did tell me that they had EVAP codes that they've been trying to fix for a while now and these codes can never get taken care of. These codes are not going away. Now this first code over here can be caused by a defective vent valve itself or a problem in the vent valve wiring. Okay, And then the second code, this can be caused by a fuel tank pressure sensor issue. If the fuel tank pressure sensor is bad, it's going to cause this code to be set or if the wiring of the fuel tank pressure sensor has a fault because the computer looks at the pressure change in the fuel tank when it closes the purge valve to test the EVAP system. So if the pressure inside the tank doesn't change when the computer closes the purge valve, when the computer closes the purge valve to test the EVAP system, if the pressure in the tank doesn't change, it's going to throw this code. So let's see, let's see what else we have. It looks like we have the same codes. So right here, 
so P0441, P0446, and P0455, okay? So we have the same codes here, same codes everywhere. Okay, so this is good to know. Our problem is in the EVAP system. So now let's go into the engine computer. So all these other control units over here don't have codes in them. Okay, only the engine computer has three trouble codes. Okay, so we can potentially have a defective purge valve. We can potentially have a defective vent solenoid. We can potentially have a defective fuel tank pressure sensor. We can potentially have an issue in the fuel tank pressure sensor wiring. We can also have an issue in the purge valve wiring. We can also have a problem in the vent valve wiring. Okay, so now let's go to... Let me see if we can do... Let's go to EVAP system check. Let's see if we can look at some data that will give us a clue in terms of where the issue might be. So it says engine must be running. So let's start the engine. Let's click continue. So purge valve open, vent solenoid is off, our fuel tank pressure didn't change that much. This could be caused by, this could be a fuel tank pressure sensor issue. Because if the fuel tank pressure sensor is not telling the engine computer the pressure change in the tank, the computer is going to think that the vent solenoid is not closing or the purge solenoid is not opening. The computer can throw all kinds of codes if the fuel tank pressure sensor is not working. So we see our tank pressure is stuck at 1.1 inches of mercury. See? Now the purge valve is off and the vent valve is also off so they're both closed right now since the front door and the back door are closed, this tank pressure should change. The tank pressure should increase and this value over here should change. But as you can see, this is not changing. Okay, now it's sealing the system to see if the tank pressure is going to change. So watch that. Nothing is happening here. Now, right now they are both open. Purge valve is open and vent valve is also open. You see how we went down to 0 0.7 and now it went back up to 1.1. This value over here. Because what the computer is doing is it's toggling the purge valve and the vent valve. So it closes the vent valve, it opens the purge valve to allow vacuum to go into the fuel tank. And then it closes the purge valve and the vent valve and then the computer watches the pressure change inside the tank. So right there the test is done, test complete. What are the results? EVA purge seal test. Let's try this one. Let's see if this system is sealing. Now while we're sitting here on the driver's seat we can also do a couple of tests using our scan tool to check the wiring of the purge solenoid and the vent solenoid even before going under the hood or going to the back of the vehicle these solenoids are pretty loud so after we are done this test i am going to turn these solenoids on and off to see if i can hear them so when i turn these solenoids on and off the vent solenoid and the purge solenoid when I turn them on with the scan tool, if they click, that will tell me that the wiring of the solenoids is good. So we can already rule out a potential wiring issue. 
So we're getting the same thing, guys. Even here, we still have that 1.1 value. See this value over here, 1.1? We have the same value. Now, this customer is here just for a diagnosis. After I'm done with the diagnosis, I'm going to tell them what I find. But if he's going to have us fix this car, we're going to have to keep it here. So this value went down. Oh, watch this. It's changed. So purge valve is on, vent valve is on also. Our tank pressure went down to 0 0.4. So that's good. I heard the engine RPM change slightly. So our tank pressure value changed a little bit. I think this was the same test we just did. Okay, let's go to actuator test. Canister, pressure control, EVAP, VSV alone. What's the VSV alone? interesting I think this over here is is the vent valve see canister pressure control this is the vent valve okay so here's what I'm gonna do the vent valve is supposed to be uh, normally open and then the purge valve is supposed to be normally closed so let's look at some data I want to look at my uh, purge valve data so purge valve data and vent valve data and then we're gonna close this guy wait a minute I do not have purge and vent data pads here no fuel tank pressure this is odd okay I'm gonna turn off the engine I'm gonna turn the key on let's go to actuator test Let's turn on this solenoid here. Let me, let's listen carefully. Let's see if we can hear this click. These solenoids tend to be very loud. So let's listen. So as I'm turning this on and off, nothing is happening. So let's back out. I don't hear a click coming from under the hood or under the vehicle. So let's try to turn on this EVAP VSV alone All right, let's see what we got I heard a click under the hood When I first turned this on So whatever the VSV alone valve is the wiring of this valve is good Okay, you know what? What I wanted to do is I wanted to turn on and off the vent solenoid and then look at my fuel tank pressure data pad, my vent valve data pad and my, my purge valve data pad. I was going to be turning on and off the vent solenoid while I'm watching the pressure change in the tank. But it looks like we do not have tank pressure data pad over here which is really odd unless I'm missing it here fuel tank pressure sensor nothing so I might have to change scan tools maybe our RTL scan tool will be better but before I connect my RTL scan tool to the vehicle let's go under the hood and do a quick visual inspection and then I will get the RTL scan tool connected to the vehicle. After I get my RTL scan tool connected to the vehicle, we might have to use our smoke machine to test this EVAP system. So now let's go under the hood. We are here under the hood. The key is still on in the vehicle. I don't know if you can hear this. The purge valve is clicking. Do you hear this? So I hope you can hear that. Let me bring the microphone closer. So the purge valve over here is clicking only just by having the key on. And that's not supposed to do that. When I put my finger on it, I can feel it vibrating. 
okay? And it looks like someone zip tied these tubes. Now, this over here is our EVAP line. This is our EVAP service port. So this tube is coming back from the EVAP canister in the back. So it comes down this way. So our fuel vapors from the tank come down this line all the way from the canister down to this line and then through this tube over here and then they come into this little tiny little tank over here and then they make a loop and come into this purge valve and then from the purge valve there's another hose over here okay so when when the computer opens the purge valve fuel vapors flow from this side of the tube to this side so the purge valve opens and then fuel vapors flow from this side of the tube to this tube and then they go into the intake to get burnt while the engine is running so i'm gonna go in the vehicle and turn the key off let's turn the key off and see if the purge valve is gonna stop clicking so the key is off Of course, the purge valve stopped clicking. So, and this line over here is going to the back of the vehicle. I'm gonna crawl under the car and do a visual inspection under the vehicle. I looked under the vehicle, everything looks good. The EVAP tubing looks fine. Actually, this vehicle doesn't look really rusty underneath. I like how it looks. So, everything under the vehicle looks good. Now I'm gonna bring out my smoke machine so we can smoke the EVAP system. Before I bring out my smoke machine to test the EVAP system, I wanna test the purge valve. We're gonna use this vacuum gauge to test the purge valve. I'm gonna start the engine, and while the engine is running, we should not have a vacuum on the other side of the purge valve. We can also disconnect the electrical connector of the purge valve to see what happens. So I'm gonna connect this vacuum gauge to this line over here. So I'm gonna disconnect this tube. I'm gonna connect my vacuum gauge to this line. Okay, as you can see, we are reading zero. Now, when I start the engine, there shouldn't be vacuum going to this gauge, okay? So there's vacuum on this side. So this side of the purge valve this side of the purge valve has vacuum because it's connected to the intake but this side of the purge valve should not have vacuum until the computer opens this purge valve okay so with the engine idling we shouldn't have vacuum over here so now i'm gonna go in the vehicle and start the engine let's see what we got So as you can hear, the engine is running. So our gauge stayed at zero, so that's good. So this tells us that our purge valve is not stuck open, okay? So this is a good thing. So the purge valve is not stuck open, so we're good to go. So our purge valve is most likely good. So now I'm gonna bring out my scan tool. I'm gonna open this purge valve because the purge valve could also be stuck closed. I'm gonna turn this on. Let's see if we're gonna have vacuum at the gauge. So I got my scan tool here. I'm gonna bring it up over here so you can also see the gauge. So over here it says, purge canister so I'm gonna turn on the purge valve so I want you guys to watch the gauge so I'm gonna turn it on so right there I'm gonna turn it off you see how it's going back now it shouldn't be going back it should hold okay now the fact that the gauge went all the way up to about 20 inches of mercury that tells me that the wiring of this valve is good okay 
I'm going to turn on the purge valve once again right there okay and the purge valve is clicking okay so that's good let's turn it off if I remember correctly we shouldn't be dropping vacuum it should hold vacuum but we know the purge valve is opening the wiring of the purge valve is good okay we don't have vacuum leaking past the purge valve so that's good so now I'm gonna go in the vehicle and turn off the engine I'm gonna bring my smoke machine over here I'm gonna get my smoke machine connected to the vehicle and then I'll bring you guys back up so at this point we are going to turn on and off the vent solenoid so I'm gonna get my smoke machine set up and then I'll bring you guys back up I got my smoke machine connected so we're good to go the green LED light is on the scan tool is still connected to the vehicle I'm gonna disconnect our vacuum gauge let's put it over here I'm gonna reconnect this tube over here this hose that comes from the purge solenoid so now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna back out of this test I'm sorry for the glare let's back out of this test and then we're gonna go to the canister pressure control vacuum switching valve so this is the vent valve now this valve is normally open so we are going to close it and then we're going to send vacuum down the evap system i'm sorry we're going to send smoke down the evap system so before we turn this vacuum switching valve on let's see if we have a fuel tank pressure sensor data pit here because i want to see if the fuel pressure sensor data pit is going to change when we send vacuum when we send smoke which is technically the same thing the smoke that the smoke machine puts out acts as a vacuum in the evap system so right here vapor psi i believe that's it this data pit over here vapor psi is 0 0.02 psi I think that is our fuel tank pressure that appeared right there okay so we're gonna watch this vapor PSI that appeared and it should change when we send smoke into the evap system where did it go right here vapor pressure 0 0.02 psi so right there so now let's turn on our smoke machine we should see smoke coming out of this tube i did remove the shredder valve that goes on the service port off camera so i put this service tube on the service port of the evap system so now we're gonna connect our smoke machine to the evap system so now we're gonna send smoke into the evap system actually before we send smoke into the evap system let's turn on let's turn on this vent solenoid first okay so now we're gonna send smoke here so the system should be sealed oh check this out there's a huge leak over here this hose is leaking okay let me fix this leak first we have a big leak right over here so I turned off the smoke machine let's turn off our vent solenoid so let's fix this first oh check this out you see this hose was cracked now this could also be the issue it could be as stupid as this tube over here 
okay as you can see it cracked it broke so I'm gonna fix this off camera I'm gonna cut this nicely and maybe just reconnect it to this tube and then I'll bring you guys back up okay I'm gonna cut this I'm gonna get a razor blade cut this nicely and I'm gonna try to reconnect it to this tube and after that I will bring you guys back up we're gonna do the same test again here is what I did off camera I put a piece of uh, heater hose over here with a metal sleeve between this evap tube and this part so I can connect it to this metal line okay so this should prevent this little section to leak so this is what broke so now I am going to now I'm gonna turn on this this uh, vacuum switching valve turn that on I think I heard a click in the back we're gonna turn on our smoke machine we should have smoke coming out of this so now I'm gonna connect my smoke machine line to this hose over here okay and then we're gonna watch this vacuum pressure okay I'm, I'm sorry this vapor pressure so it looks like we have another leak over here oh this thing is still leaking okay this is not good enough let's turn this off we still have a leak over here so it looks like my my fix didn't work I need to get a smaller hose I got a small hose to this sleeve so now let's connect it over here hopefully this is not gonna leak just like that okay so that's pretty tight I don't think it's gonna leak so now let's turn on our smoke machine we're gonna turn on our switching valve we got smoke coming out of this now let's send smoke into our evap system okay so as you can see we no longer have a leak there so now let's watch our vapor our vapor pressure so this should be our fuel tank pressure let's see so we are at 0 0.09 psi now let's check our check ball the check ball is still up hold on let me disconnect this let's check this as you can see the check ball is working okay okay so we are connected to the evap system i'm gonna disconnect the hose that comes from the purge valve that goes to the intake we shouldn't have smoke over here if we have smoke over here that will be an indication of a leaking purge valve so we got no smoke over here so that's good okay so our gauge over here is oscillating okay so our vapor pressure is still stuck at 0 0.09 psi so we got nothing over here let's go check the gas cap i was told that the gas cap was changed oh check this out 
we got a leak here the gas cap is leaking so let's open the fuel door ah here's the problem guys now this gas cap looks new but as you can see it's leaking hope you can see right there the gas cap is leaking so this is the problem or a problem this could be a problem we might have other problems okay we know the gas cap is leaking let's look under the vehicle and see if we have smoke leaking down here nothing over here nothing there nothing over here all right now this gas cap looks new and it's an aftermarket gas cap and these aftermarket gas caps don't seal well sometimes so i'm gonna recommend an oem gas cap yeah you see that so this is not this is not sealing so we're gonna have to get an oem gas cap and see what happens so i'm gonna have to call toyota and get an oem gas cap so we have to replace this gas cap first as you can see this is leaking let's get an oem gas cap and see what happens and then i'm gonna fix i'm gonna fix this tube over here okay we're gonna get a good tube and fix this and after that we're gonna try again now this customer came all the way from virginia so i don't know if he's gonna have me do this or maybe he's gonna take it back to his mechanic and tell his mechanic because the fuel tank pressure cannot increase if we have a gas cap that's leaking okay so we found the problem we found the issue on this toyota the issue is a leaking gas cap although the gas cap was replaced but they installed an aftermarket gas cap which is not sealing properly so i'm going to recommend replacing that gas cap with an oem unit actually the customer is here waiting for the vehicle they drove all the way from virginia so they are sitting in the waiting room waiting for the results of the diagnosis so right now we have to install an oem gas cap on it that's going to seal properly and then we are going to fix the hose under the hood that connects to the tube that goes to the purge solenoid and then I would like to do another test to see if we don't have any other leaks in the EVAP system so I don't know if they're gonna leave it I don't think Toyota has this gas cap I'm gonna call them and figure out if they don't have it we're gonna have to order it so I don't know if the customer is gonna leave this vehicle here or maybe they're gonna take it back to their mechanic so he can install the OEM fuel cap so I'm gonna talk to the customer and then I'll bring you guys back up. All right, guys, a little bit later, I told the customer that this vehicle needs a fuel cap, but I'm gonna recommend an OEM fuel cap. The customer said, go ahead, do it. So we got the fuel cap, I have it here. So now let's install the fuel cap and see if that's gonna fix our problem. So here is our fuel cap. As you can see, it's an OEM cap. Here's the part number. Let me get it out of the box. So here it is. We don't want to drop it. So here's our brand new fuel cap from Toyota OEM. Okay. So let's put the box right there. So this is what we're going to install now. We're gonna redo the same thing again. So I'm gonna, the key is still on in the vehicle. So I'm gonna turn on our canister pressure control vacuum switching valve. So that's on, we're gonna turn on our smoke machine. Now I want you guys to watch the check ball on the smoke machine. So we got smoke coming out. As you can see, our ball is sticking up here. If I close this, which will mean no leak, the ball goes down. So watch that. You see this ball over here? 
look at this ball okay now if the system is sealed if the evap system doesn't have a leak this check ball should come down okay look at the gauge okay so when the system is sealed our gauge is over here okay and the ball sits all the way down over here so now we're gonna connect our vacuum machine line to the evap system just like that okay and i told the customer we could have other leaks but if we after installing this gas cap if our check ball goes down that will mean the leak is fixed and then i'm going to replace these hoses and after that we should be good to go okay so as you can see our check ball is still sticking up okay so we still have a leak in the evap system so now let's take this gas cap to the back of the vehicle so we can install it let's see if this is going to fix the problem so as you can see the aftermarket gas cap is leaking so I'm gonna undo it as you can see right there so let's remove this so now we're gonna install our OEM gas cap wow even the way this one feels is different oh check this out instantly as you can see we no longer have a leak great okay so we no longer have smoke leaking out of the cap so that's good so now let's go back under the hood and look at our smoke machine so the gauge is going over here so that's good now we're gonna watch our check ball oh check that out the check ball went down this is nice I like it as you can see our check ball is going down keep going baby just watch that ball nice the check ball went all the way down okay so I'm gonna go back here and open this gas cap watch this okay I partially opened it we have smoke leaking here now so it's loose let's go to the check ball on the smoke machine let's see what happens so our check ball went up very nice okay so now I'm just confirming the repair okay so this is loose we have a leak over here so now I'm gonna close it all the way okay no more leaks no more leaks here we're good so now let's go check our check ball on the smoke machine so the check ball is definitely what's telling us if the leak is fixed or not so it takes a little bit for this check ball to drop let's see if it's gonna drop let me turn on our smoke machine oh check that out turned on the smoke machine our check ball just went down okay so that's it this is fixed guys so the issue was a defective fuel cap okay the check ball went down so we're good to go it's interesting how two shops could not figure this out okay and our vapor pressure here is is 0 0.27 psi okay so 0 0.27 psi when the system is sealed okay with vacuum in the system so now the evap system is sealed now we could also have a fuel tank pressure sensor that's not working so right now our vapor pressure is 0 0.27 psi 
So we know the EVAP system is sealed, we no longer have a leak. So now we have to check our fuel tank pressure sensor. Is the fuel tank pressure sensor telling the computer about the pressure change inside the tank? So I'm going to disconnect this hose and when I disconnect this hose, the pressure is going to drop in the tank. This value over here should change. So let's disconnect this. So now I want you guys to watch this value on the scan tool. As you can see, our vapor pressure is going down. We're down to 0 0.04 PSI. So that's good, okay? Our fuel tank pressure sensor is actually telling the engine computer the pressure change inside the fuel tank. So we're good. So that's it, guys. This is fixed. We're good to go. I am going to... I think I have these hoses around the shop. I'm going to replace this hose. And after that, we should be good to go. Okay, so we're done. This vehicle needed a gas cap. So they put an aftermarket gas cap in it. We put an OEM gas cap in it, and now all is well. So we're good to go. That was a quick and easy one. Can you believe that? This vehicle came from two different shops and it came all the way from Virginia. All right, so we're done guys. Now let's wrap up this video. I don't have to show you how I'm gonna replace these hoses because replacing these vacuum hoses is really straightforward. So I'm done. So now we can wrap up this video. So this is fixed. So we are done. Now I can get my smoke machine out of the way. We're good to go. We know where the issue is now and we fixed it. So we're good to go. We are back in the vehicle. I'm gonna bring up our scan tool. We're gonna to erase the trouble codes and then we're gonna wrap up this video. Let's go to trouble codes. Now we have a bunch of codes because there were some things that got disconnected when we were doing our test. So I'm gonna erase all these codes now. Now the fact that our system got sealed after replacing the gas cap and when we turned on our solenoids with our scan tool, we heard them click. So that confirmed to us that the purge valve solenoid wiring was good. The vent solenoid wiring was good. And they were closing when we did the test with the smoke machine. So we're good to go. Okay. So right now, if we go back to codes, we won't have any codes in the engine computer. And after that, the check engine light should be off when we start the engine. Okay, let's go back to codes. No codes present, so we're good to go. Let's cycle the key and start the engine. So right there, as you can see, the check engine light went off, so we're good to go. This is fixed, guys. As you can see, check engine light is now off, so we're good. Okay. So we're going to have another happy customer. So now let's wrap up this video. All right, guys, we're going to leave this right over here. This Toyota is fixed. The issue on this Toyota was a defective fuel cap. We installed a OEM fuel cap in it. Now all is well. I also replaced the hoses that were cracked under the hood. Just tiny little hoses. We replaced them. Now all is well. So I hope you liked the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why so we can make better videos in the future. If this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Once again, I wanna say thank you to Mr. Joe for driving all the way here to Maryland. They drove, I believe, an hour and a half to come to us. So I appreciate your business, Mr. Joe. I'm sure you're gonna watch this video. He told me that, you know, he likes watching the videos and uh, he enjoys them. So thank you very much. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.